Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Welcome to today's edition of our ongoing study on course 125, Kingdom Finance and Stewardship. This course is a practical one. This is a course that is supposed to liberate us from errors, errors to the right and errors to the left, and to understand what the Bible says and stay on the Bible. And we welcome you to be part of the ongoing conversation. Let's pray and see what the Lord will tell us today. Father in heaven, there is no one besides you. Have your way and teach us and instruct us in your word, by your spirit. Take the things of Yeshua and show us. Thank you, Father, as you grant us understanding. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen and amen. Brothers and sisters, today in lesson four, we're going to be looking at divine prosperity in the original plan and as part of the Old Covenant, the Old Testament. You know what the Lord established in Lesson 1, Lesson 2, Lesson 3 is so important. I want to say again, uh, the teaching note will not be available this morning because we had internet issues. But I believe the Lord is just releasing a yoke-breaking course. Because there are people who are bound by the yoke of false or pseudo-holiness and their attitude to divine prosperity is negative. There are also those who are bound by the yoke of pseudo-prosperity and their attitude is equally negative. So brothers and sisters, we need to understand something. The pseudo-holiness movement which demonizes wealth and prosperity and the pseudo-prosperity movement, which idolizes wealth and prosperity, neither of them is correct. Neither is right. The law of first mention establishes a biblical principle that to understand any subject matter, you need to just go to the place where it was first mentioned. If you can identify where it was first mentioned, the context and the content, then you can understand what the Lord had in mind. And for that reason, we're going to go to the original picture. The very first place where the issue of prosperity was mentioned. And in the very first chapter of the book of Genesis, Elohim gave us a clear picture of his original plan for prosperity for his children in the earth realm. And nothing can be clearer than the explanation of his own purpose, as said by him in his own word, for creating humanity and the blessings we are meant to enjoy in pursuit of the divine plan. You know, Genesis chapter 1 from verse 26. And Elohim said, Let us make man in our own image and likeness. Let him have dominion over the fish, over the fowl, over all things that are on earth. And according to that principle, when he fulfilled that, Elohim looked back and saw that all things he made were exactly the way he wanted them to be. So we know that from that Genesis 1, 26 to 29, we see that first, Elohim was given two foundational blessings. He gave to man two foundational blessings. One, excise dominion over all creation. Two, enjoy every good thing that is in the earth realm. And then, Mankind was designed to live on the benefits of a loving father from heaven. They were not to, supposed to live by struggle, by effort. It's what the Lord provided. We receive it as an inheritance. And then mankind did not have to struggle, to sweat, to partake of this inheritance. It wasn't something we're going to earn by ourselves. And in Genesis chapter 2, verse 15 to 17, we are told that Adam and Eve received the specific charge to dress and to keep the Garden of Eden. Take note of those two words, to dress it, to keep it. Responsibility to take charge, steward it, is given from heaven. They were not just to enjoy it, but to address it and keep it. Okay, prune, prune the, the, the tree so that it bring forth more fruit, you know, dress and keep. In other words, we are created to be responsible managers of the resources that Elohim places for our benefit in the earth realm. We are not supposed to be loafers. We are not supposed to be people who are like pests, 
caterpillars come and eat up. No, we're supposed to be co-laborers with him in the sense not of sweating, but in the sense of making sure that the blueprint he gives is observed. Let there be no doubt about this summary of what has been said so far, that the blessings from Elohim with the attendant holistic prosperity were clearly meant to be part of human experience in the earth realm. The causes and the pain, including crushing poverty, death, and all those things, they were to come later with the fall of Adam and Eve. So, first mention is blessing. And Elohim blessed them. Increase, multiply, fill the earth. Now, take note, it's so important. Many believers carry, one, sin consciousness in their mind. Two, many believers carry cause consciousness. C-U-R-S-E, cause consciousness. The Lord wants us to carry a righteousness consciousness based on what was done for us at the cross. He also wants us to carry a blessing consciousness so that we can be able to tap into what he made for us to be. So let's understand that poverty was a consequence of sin and disobedience. Two things. The intrusion of sin changed the original plan. By disobeying Elohim and succumbing to the solicitations of Satan, Adam and Eve had their blessings withdrawn. Instead of enjoying eternal life and good, you know, eternal life and the good of the earth, they were condemned to a life of enduring pain, suffering, sorrow, struggle to survive, to labor, to eke out a living. And do, those are the ingredients of systemic poverty. Brothers and sisters, Genesis 3, 1 to 8 tells us about the fall. Satan came and tempted Adam and Eve. And what the Lord told him in Genesis 2, you can eat everything but not this one, not this fruit. And Satan came to let Eve know that Elohim was insecure to suggest that. Because Elohim knew if you eat, you'll be like God. You don't need anything else. So Satan tempted Eve on what she was already. She was already a God of this world with Adam to take care of the earth rim on behalf of Elohim. And Satan used that to tempt. If you don't know your inheritance, if you don't know your rights, the enemy can come and tempt you with what is already yours. And once you succumb to his voice, you miss it, you trip over, you fall. And so that is what happened. And it is it, important to now know that with that temptation, when they disobeyed Elohim and obeyed Satan in Genesis 3, 1 to 8, when Elohim came, Adam ran. Adam and Eve ran in to the bush to cover themselves, forgetting that it was his eye, his eyes were penetrating, he sees all, he's omniscient, he's omnipresent, he knew what they did. But then Elohim then pronounced a curse on the earth ring because of what happened to Adam and Eve. That is when in chapter Genesis 3 from uh, 16 to 19, what he pronounced was hard labor. If if we can look for the words of that pronouncement, let me see whether I can have it. As I told you, the internet is not working. What we are here is indeed it is a miracle that we're able to even to transmit because of you. Elohim saw you that we're able to say anything. So we see Genesis 3. Let, let me show you from verse 16. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow shall thou bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Then to Adam, verse 17, unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree, of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. What was the consequence? Cost is the ground for thy sake. Number one, the blessings turn to cursing. Two, in sorrow thou shalt eat of it all the days of thy life. Three, verse 18, Tongues also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. 4. Verse 19. In the sweat of thy face shall thou eat bread, till thou return to the ground. For out of it thou wast taken, and for thus thou art, and unto thus thou shalt return. 
So the blessings turn to curses. Man wants to sweat. Man wants to struggle. And brothers and sisters, one of the most tragic things we can ever think of is that we, people don't tend to, for, to remember, people tend to forget that all this poverty and crisis that humanity faces today, these are all things that were not there originally. Originally was blessings and prosperity. These were things that came because of disobedience and sin. Take note of these two words again. Sin and disobedience brings causes. So works, hard labor and sweat, replace grace, blessings and divine favor. The earth which hitherto brought forth a rich harvest began to bear tongues and tissues, making cropping a very difficult experience. To worsen matters, Adam and Eve were chased out of Eden. They lost fellowship with the, their maker and were exposed to wild beasts and adverse weather. If we keep these foundational truths, what I've just said, in view, it will be easy to properly understand why the church needs to be open to the full redemptive mission of Yeshua. Because what has happened is that because of the spirit of religion that the church embraced in the seventeenth in the fourth, fourth century, which is seventeen hundred years ago, fourth century, the church embraced something that made it impossible for all for any believer to walk in the truth normally. You have to have special revelation. You have to be well taught before you can understand the original plan of the Father and even be able to know how you can tap into it. And I want to say this to you. As in all the teachings the Lord brings through this commission, we're going to be balanced. We're going to show you the plan of the Father. We're going to show you how to assess the plan. We're going to show you the consequences of not walking in it. And we're also going to show you that there is also those who the Lord earmarks for special uh, blessings. And you need to know where you fall in so you can know what to get. So we, we now, now let's look at prosperity between the fall and the old covenant. Okay? That to say, be, after the fall of Adam, before the old covenant was established, there were people the Lord walked with. Before the old covenant came to pass, Noah was one of them. The Bible records that in a world where wickedness was rife, Noah found grace in the sight of Elohim. Go to Genesis chapter 3. Read from verse 1. There you see in verse 8. Noah found grace in the sight of Elohim. Not by his works. Elohim's mercy met Noah. While the whole world was destroyed by a flood, Noah and his family, totaling eight persons in all, were saved in the ark. And the reality of his being wealthy cannot be doubted, for he owned all things. He, in a sense, now was like Adam 2.0. Because the old world was destroyed by flood, the war from Adam, and Noah was the beginning of a new one, and everything on earth was literally his own when he came out of the ark. And through his singleness, if you have time, read Genesis chapter 8, all of it, but from verse 15 particularly, through his singleness of mind to honor Elohim and worship him as a supreme being, Noah procured the first law which governs prosperity. The law of sowing and reaping. Noah got it as a promise from Elohim. While the earth remained, verse 22, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. As long as the earth remains, there will be time to sow and time to reap. And if you understand this law, because it's so fundamental. After the flood is the first law. Before this was some years before Moses came, uh, uh, probably anywhere between six hundred to seven hundred years before Moses got the Torah, this law was put in place before the law. So it's a perpetual law: seed time and harvest. Seed time and harvest. The very year you sow may not be where you reap, but you reap. If you sold it unto the Lord, and that's where people make a mistake. They expect that, oh, I did this for this person. He must bring me back. And that leads to an expectation syndrome. But if you do all things as unto the Lord, 
Everything you do is a seed. There's a harvest commensurate with that seed. If it's good, you earn it. I mean, you enjoy it. If it's bad, you suffer it. So, what of Abraham? The next person who enjoyed unusual and holistic prosperity was Abraham, the friend of Elohim. The Bible reveals that divine prosperity was part and parcel of his covenant relationship with Elohim. In Genesis chapter 12, he was called out of all of the Chaldeans. And look at what the Lord said to him in verse 2. And I will make of thee a great nation. Elohim will make of him, not by his power. I will make of thee a great nation. Two, and I will bless thee. Three, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. Four things were there. And then he said in verse 3, I'll bless them that bless thee, and cause them that curse thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So Abraham secured an extraordinary covenant of blessings with Elohim for his work with Elohim. Let us take note that Elohim specifically commanded us to look at Abraham as a model. In the book of Isaiah chapter 51, we are told in verse 1 and 2, look unto Abraham. <laughs> look unto Abraham. Look at him as a model. And if you look at Romans chapter 4 from 17 to 22, we are told about this Abraham who against hope believed in hope. And brother and sister, I don't know what you're going through. Can you look beyond what you're going through and look at the promises of Elohim? Can you look beyond whatever is your experience and put your faith in him? Elohim is faithful. He's too faithful to fail. He cannot fail. Brothers and sisters, his, child, his son, Isaac, walked in the blessing of prosperity. And Jacob, the father of Israel, walked in blessings of prosperity. Then now let's go to the Old Covenant, the Old Testament, to establish prosperity in the old covenant the old covenant was essentially sealed on the altar of blessings for the obedient and causes for the disobedient that is true the old covenant that is the basis of it all those who obey what elohim said they get blessed those who disobey and do their own stuff they get cursed so in exodus 19 in describing why he chose, I mean, in trying to validate his choice of the Jews as a people after they came out of Egypt. Look at what he said in Exodus 19, verse 5. Now, therefore, if, thou would, if you will obey, obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then shall you be a peculiar treasure unto me. He said to the Jews, if you obey my voice, you'll be a peculiar treasure unto me, special treasure above all people of all the people group on earth you will be peculiar treasure unto me for all the earth is mine verse 6 and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation a kingdom of priests and a holy nation people who stand between him and people people who are you know exercise kingly authority People who manifest his goodness and his mercy. And then he says, these are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. And just like Adam and Abraham, the foundational principle of divine prosperity, you know, is a covenant relationship where obedience to the voice of and the laws of Elohim guides the life of his people. In sealing the old covenant, therefore, the awesome blessings and causes were set before the people to choose which way they preferred. If you go to Deuteronomy, chapter 28, let, let, let's read some of the voices, uh, let's read some of the pages, let's see what it says. Deuteronomy chapter 28, what does it say in verse, um, yeah, Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1, it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy Elohim, to observe and to do all his commandments which I commanded this day, that the Lord thy Elohim will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Look at that. That's what he told them in the Old Covenant. If you obey my voice, if you diligently incline your ear to hear and to do my will, 
verse 2, and all these blessings shall come on thee, and shall overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy Elohim. Now watch this. You thought you had had something? Then watch this. Blessed shall thou be in the city, and blessed shall thou be in the field. Look at that. When you're in the city, you're blessed. You go out to your farms, you're blessed. Verse 4. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Verse 5. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Verse 6. Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. Verse 7. The Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come against thee one way, and shall flee seven ways. Verse 8. The Lord shall command the blessings upon thee, in thy storehouses, and in all that thou settest thy hand unto, he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy Elohim giveth thee. Verse 9. The Lord shall establish thee and holy people to himself, as he has sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy Elohim, and walk in his ways. Verse 10. And all people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and shall be afraid of thee. Verse 11. The Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, in the fruit of thy cattle, in the fruit of thy ground, in the land that the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. Verse 12. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven, to give the rain unto thee at thy land in his season. And, you know, let's see, yeah, wait, just wait a second. He said, the heavens to give the land unto thee. In other words, listen, look at, what it, look at what it means. That when you will walk in obedience to the Lord, he will open the heavens. He will open the heavens to give rain unto the land in the season. And to bless all the work of thy hand, you shall lend unto many nations and you shall not borrow. Then verse 13, wow, the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail, and thou shalt be above only and, not, and shall not be beneath. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice, unto the commandments of the Lord thy Elohim, which I commanded this day to observe and to do them. So the blessings were tied to obedience to the word of the Lord. He didn't just prosper outside of his word, outside of his will, you prospered within his word and his will. And look at what he says in verse 15. And it shall come to pass, if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy Elohim, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which are commanded this day, and all these causes shall come upon thee, and shall overtake thee. 1, verse 16. Cause shall thou be in the city, and cause shall thou be in the field. 17. Cost shall be the, thy basket and thy store. 18. Cost shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy land and the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep. Verse 19. Cost shall that be when thou comest in and cost shall that be when thou goest out. Verse 20. The Lord shall send unto thee cursing, vexation, and rebuke in all that thou settest thy hand unto to do until thou be destroyed, and until thou perish quickly, because of the wickedness of thy doings, whereby thou hast forsaken me. 21. The Lord shall make the pestilence cleave unto thee, until he have consumed thee of the land, whither thou goest to possess it. 22. The Lord shall smite thee with a consumption, and with a fever, with an inflammation, with an extreme burning, and with a sword, and with blasting, and with mildew, and they shall pursue thee until thou perish. 23. And the heaven that is over thy head shall be like brass, and the earth that is under thee as iron. So you see the Lord here articulating, if you, if you obey my voice, blessings. If you disobey, causes, difficulties, poverty, crisis. Brothers and sisters, the Lord is compassionate. The Lord is merciful. He outlined these things so that they can make the right choice. And in Deuteronomy 29 verse 9, he said, Keep therefore the words of this covenant and do them, that ye may prosper in all that you do. The old covenant had blessings for those who obeyed and curses for those who disobeyed. And in Joshua chapter 1, 
the man who succeeded Moses to establish the purpose of Elohim for Israel. Joshua 1 7. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee, turn not from it to the right or to the or to thy right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper with us where thou goest. Verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then shall thou make thy way prosperous, then shall thou have good success. So, brothers and sisters, the old covenant was simply based on this principle. Then let's look at the time of the law, I mean the time of the kings and the prophets, starting from David. The kings of Israel were decorated with uncommon wealth, commensurate with their royal mandates. In clear terms, the quantum of allocations they received were commensurate for scope of their assignment. David was very wealthy. He had all he needed, was even able to stack up wealth for building the temple. Because he was prevented by Elohim, he stacked up resources for his son. Solomon attained the epitome of wealth and prosperity that was such a global phenomenon that the queen of Sheba came all the way from Ethiopia by road to come and see for herself what had been had in all the then known world. And of course the kings of Tashis, you know, Hiram and others, they used to bring timber for, for, for building of things in Jerusalem. Israel was the sign of the eyes of the whole world. It will be that again when Yeshua returns. So, brothers and sisters, we need to understand that the principles of prosperity were embedded in the poetic books. We're talking about Psalm 1, 1 to 3. Blessed is he who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly or stand in the seat of scornful or stand in the way of sinners. You know, to receive guidance from them. He says, it shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth its fruit in its season. Then in Psalm 35, verse 27, Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, Let the Lord, you know, be magnified, which hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Brothers and sisters, awesome. The word of the book of Proverbs, you see principles of prosperity. The book of Ecclesiastes, principles. The major and minor prophets outline principles and precepts that lead to prosperity, whether Isaiah or Jeremiah or Ezekiel, they all had. In Joel 2, 18 to 28, it talks about the, the locust and palmer worm and caca worm that eats up the resources of the people. The Lord promised that he will come and take them away. He will root them out so that his people can walk in fullness of divine prosperity. Brothers and sisters, even Malachi, as the Old Testament was closing out, the, you cannot but see also the principles there. He says in Malachi 3, 10, bring in all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now there which, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, and there shall not be enough room to receive it. So we see that these things were clearly there, articulated, put out clearly. The old covenant was one of blessing for the obedient. Before the old covenant, at the beginning, the original plan of Elohim was blessing and prosperity. Causes came with sin. Causes came with disobedience and poverty with it and other things. So why is the Lord laid this foundation? It's for us to see that the New Testament has been grossly disfigured by the spirit of religion. So we're going to look at the New Testament, and I want to tell you what the Lord was showing this morning was mind-blowing. And how he had set the covenant in such a way that people, the average person is provided for by his father. Our Father has enough for all our need, not for our greed. And when it comes to the realm of needs, everything that is needful for your destiny, if you are a child of Elohim and stay in his covenant, is already provided. We're going to, this afternoon is like, it's just going to be a blowout. 
I urge you to be there, to listen, to watch, so that we can learn what the Lord has for us. Let's look at the assignment for two, for this first uh, this uh, uh, lesson four. Number one, what do you understand from Genesis chapters one and two? What is the core thing you understand based on what we said today? Two, describe consequence of the fall in Genesis chapter three, from verse sixteen to nineteen. Describe the consequences. Three. Summarize the lives of Noah and Abraham in terms of prosperity that the Lord gave to them. Four, identify two scriptures in the Old Covenant which reveal that prosperity was provided for in that dispensation. Any two scriptures in the Old Covenant that shows that prosperity was provided for, you know, there. Then, five, cite any Three passages in the poetic books, you know, like the Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, where prosperity of saints is promised. Then there's another assignment. It's not for today, for those in the master class. This is for you. Take your time and do it as an assignment. You'll pass it independently. By the time we finish this course, send it to the director of studies by email those in the master class and if you are here with us blogging along you can come here today later today tomorrow next tomorrow anytime it says the this one is not immediate it should pass it separately between monday and end of this course that's between monday this monday coming to end of the course it says please use any such engine bible gateway U version whatever to locate references to blessings wealth, prosperity, riches, between Genesis and Malachi. Put in, so for instance, wealth. Get, locate the passages that talk about wealth. Put in prosperity, locate the passages, riches, put in blessings, take in, and that is okay. Because the Lord wants to do with something. He wants to go to the very root of this systemic poverty crushing the church based on faulty foundation, faulty theology. The Lord wants to deliver us and those of you who are studying, if you are studying just for studying sake, you are on the wrong place. But if you are studying that you may learn the truth that sets free, welcome on board, stay with us. I'm going to pray now and make some announcements. Father in heaven, your word has gone forth we don't take it lightly. Just have your way and let your word produce change in your people. We repent for every wrong application of your word in time past. Any way that your word has not been mined. We've not waited upon you to hear what you have to say about this matter. And there are many parts of the world where Christians are in systemic poverty. No hope, no way out because they believe a lie. Embrace a lie, and that lie has now become their reality. Father, we pray for deliverance. Do a work of grace only you can do. Let the blood go to work. And Father, let your word go to work, and let your mercy be poured out that this generation will close out the gospel fully equipped by you for the assignment ahead. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters, listen, today is Paul's day. We have special uh, uh, arrangement by 5.30 London time, which is 12.30 Eastern Standard Time and 11.30 a.m. Central Standard Time and 6.30 p.m. South Africa time. We're going to have True Kingdom Live on, you know, um, uh, TDN Africa. And how do you assess it? You go to, you know, type DSTV, any DSTV, you can, any mod, anything, any smartphone, iPad, whatever, just type DSTV 343 at the time prescribed, 530 London, you know, and all the time they're in, and you just be in True Kingdom Live. And listen to me, these are some of the last parts because we're going to modball it, you know, what we teach, we practice. We're going to modball the program because the resources to keep it going is not available. So nothing, they will just say, regarding that it's for another season and we'll take it on. So please take the, whatever you can, the truth the Lord is releasing, take them and be blessed by them while it lasts. Then by 7 o'clock, about 7 o'clock London time, 7 p.m. London time, which is uh, 1 p.m. East, a central time and 2 p.m. Eastern time, we're going to now look at prosperity, wealth, 
and blessings in the new covenant and we start today and if we, if we don't get to the end of it we continue tomorrow and then we continue until we finish this course that i believe the lord is bringing liberation to his house through the truth is releasing. Remember, our internet facility is not there. We won't be able to make announcements on, on the daybreak with the king. Remember, this memoir, his glory goes with us. The memoir of Pastor Grace is her encounter with the Lord and how he turned her around. And that was fundamental for the assignment that was going to be given to her. And I think it's something we need to go through to know that the Lord is a Lord of process. And the process she went through, it will help you to understand why we pursue the Lord the way he will pursue him and our assignment to you. So we want you to keep us in prayer that today we'll be able to sort out this internet issue so we can release the lessons. Meanwhile, for the master class, just watch and be blessed. And for other people, please blog along on the Daybreak with the King line. I mean, on the master class and the... Uh, uh, Facebook Live uh, blog along and your assignments can be received. We well, thank you for coming. Uh, Pastor Grace, thank you so much for being on the camera today with us. And those